Five today. Uh, new research suggests many of us have large gaps in our general knowledge of history, science and geography. A study by Think Tank, the New Zealand Initiative, has found, for example, only 32% of people can correctly say what year the Treaty of Waitangi was signed. And only 44% of us can name the seven continents of the world. Or oh, they get tricky though, don't they? Why would you go anywhere else? It's the AM Show. OK, so does this mean we should be looking at what our kids are learning at school or what we perhaps didn't learn and had massive gaps in our knowledge now? Joining us uh, is New Zealand Initiative Research Fellow, Brian uh, Lipson. Brian, g'day, good morning, lovely to have you on the programme. Good morning, Duncan. First question, and uh, there's no right or wrong answer here. How nervous are you that I might just fire off about 20 questions over the next five minutes and, um, and totally upend this interview is, um, and, and turn into sort of chaos? Well, obviously, I would welcome that, Duncan, the opportunity to uh, demonstrate my, my knowledge, but I'm, I'm relying on the fact that you're not going to do that. Right, Thank you. Okay. You're such a, a, I get the a message. Gentleman. Okay, so let's say number, number one, the first question today. No, I don't. Do you worry, Brian? It's okay. Um, what did you, how did you do this? What, what, why did you do it and what did you find? So um, citizenship, civic participation, um, our democracy relies on our, us having an educated population. And um, we um, wanted to find out how Kiwi's general knowledge um, compared. So we set out to find some studies that have been done. Um, and this kind of work has been done in Australia, in Aus uh, America, England. And strangely enough, there was nothing with um, information about Kiwi's general knowledge. So we took some of the questions that have been used elsewhere, devised some of our own. It's a kind of random sample of 13 questions, which we put to a representative sample of a thousand Kiwi adults. Um, and um, the, the purpose really is to start a national conversation about the role of knowledge, the importance of knowledge, and of course the relationship that has with our national curriculum and what we teach our children. Mm. What, and what's your take on this? What, what's your, um, what's your um, take on what we know, how much we know, and whether it's actually relevant at all? Well, um, you know, I must caveat, you cannot draw scientific conclusions from a small random sample, a kind of snapshot like this. We really just want to highlight the issue. And, uh, and you know, there were some surprises in the outcomes. Um, Kiwis, um, we did really well on the question about whether Winston Churchill was a real or fictional character. We actually outperformed British teenagers on that one. Um, most of us knew uh, that New Zealand was the first country to grant women the vote. Um, and then at the other end of the spectrum was the actual, the worst answers came about maths questions. And that really is a problem. So uh, a straightforward question, you have a hundred pounds, you put it in a bank account that earns 2% interest per year. There's no fees or taxes. How much would you expect to have in that bank account at the end of a year? 102. Um, Absolutely. Um, unfortunately, 47% of New Zealand New Zealanders couldn't answer that question correctly. Yes. And isn't it interesting, though, because this goes to the heart of our, our financial literacy as well, which, which, I, which I believe you know, is very poor in New Zealand, needs to be taught at a very early age, because it's probably not being taught at home, but we've got to learn about money and how important it is and how we've got to hang on to it and save it and do all sorts of things with it, make it work for us. Um, I think you've uncovered something there, which we probably already know, but it just reinforces it. Absolutely. And, you know, the, the, those of us who can answer that question, um, we probably underestimate how um, perplexing the world must be if you're somebody for whom those kinds of questions are a challenge. You know, imagine trying to um, compare the price of things in the supermarket or bake a cake when you want one and a half times the quantity um, that the recipe has. You know, these kind of simple problems that, that we face daily, in, day in, day out. You can't be looking, turning to a calculator every time. Are we dumb? Um, Are we dumb? And New Zealanders dumb? That's that's certainly not what I'm saying, Duncan. And, and actually, if there are concerns in the outcomes, um, uh, the, the point is we must look to our schooling system. What expectations is it setting? What does our New Zealand curriculum say about what children should learn? You know, the government has made a huge and really important leap in this direction recently. They've announced that New Zealand history will finally be compulsory in the national curriculum. In about primary time. And secondary about schools. time. Absolutely. And that's so exciting that we are now going to have a, a great debate, and national conversation about what knowledge needs to be um, the, the, the birthright of every Kiwi child. But why stop with New Zealand history? What about world history? What about geography? What about our culture and art and maths? The, the New Zealand curriculum is, is I mean, 
to all intents and purposes, it's a document that teachers leave on the shelf because it doesn't provide any of that information. It's so high level that we really have no idea what children are learning in school. I mean, it's too flexible and it's time to have a conversation about what knowledge should be in. And, and of course, with, beyond that, teachers can have as much flexibility is as they like. Is it too flexible or too flaky? Is it too flexible or too flaky? And is it, is it designed for 1980? That's a great question. When, 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 is it designed for 1980 when we need it designed for 2030? Um, that may be it, but uh, just one caveat there, because one of the reasons we've ended up with such a vacuous, empty curriculum, or flexible, some might, might call it, um, is partly this move to transform education. You know, there's a really seductive idea that we can now outsource our brains to Google. We don't need to learn stuff in school anymore. We're going, you know, 21st century education. It's all about critical thinking, problem solving, communication. But of course, what that forgets is that problem solving relies on our having knowledge stored in our long term memory. We quickly become overloaded if we're having to look everything up. Um, so it's a misnomer to think that we that we can just um, outsource our brains and we don't need to learn this stuff in school okay i'm going to ask a couple of questions on the way out because let's be honest i, I mean it's, it's my job i have to do this this is it's in my contract um so my <laughs> first question TV. my first question to you is and a really really simple one really simple one uh, don't worry it's only the country that you're in front of um it goes like this who is new zealand's tpd prime minister uh jacinda Ardern. no um let me just go upstairs well, and think about this maybe uh, um, maybe on. that's right on, maybe you are right <laughs> No, New Zealand's Deputy Prime Minister. Oh, sorry, I thought you said New Zealand's Prime Minister. I thought you Winston knew something Peters, we didn't. Okay. I right, didn't Winston. hear that. <laughs> I didn't hear that word. Okay, one more question, because you're, 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 in, you're, in, you're in Wellington. You're in Wellington. Uh, who is... You talk very fast. Apologies. I will slow down. Who is New Zealand's <laughs> Finance Minister? Uh, Grant Robertson. Hey. Oh, you're very smart. Very good. And what is the name of um, the Golden Mile, the main road in Wellington? Lampton Key. Well done. <laughs> like the casino, just like that. Three from three. Well done. You're going home with a dollar twenty. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time on the program, New Zealand Initiative Research Fellow Thank Brian you, Lipson. And we, we won't need your boss anymore. You're here. You're here to stay. We really enjoyed you. Well done. Perfect. Okay. Good stuff. Perfect result. Twenty-four minutes past six. Good morning.